podcast, keeping your music alive on the radio, on the video, on the podcast, on the Zoom. You know what I do. And man, I, you know, I can never stop smiling because there is incredible new music going on all the time. So I am blessed and happy for what I do. And I'm talking incredible. I got the singer, songwriter, oh my God, a realtor. She does it all. Um, Sarah Moon, as you see behind me, has released her debut, I'm going to say rock album called Cut and run and from the title track through all the tracks it has a very classic 70s rock tone if you will if that's right up my alley so um definitely fasten your seatbelts for this ride she got an incredible uh amazing vocal range i want to say i like to compare people like who do they sound like what do i hear and I hear, like, Linda Ronstead. If you put a little touch of Linda Ronstead and maybe Terry Clark, because I love country. Terry Clark's a like country. Um, and then Alanis Morissette. And you top it off with Ann Wilson of Heart. And you hit that blender. I believe you get the incredible vocals of Sarah Moon, who we're going to talk to in a minute. And you tie it together. With and I got my loyal the loyal order shirt because her co-partner, writer, incredible guitar player, Brandon Cook, and he just goes crazy with these good guitar riffs for some of these tracks. Um, and some pounding drums and some killer keys and um fasten your seatbelts because this this album will rock you off your feet. Now you know what I do, I always play the video. And Sarah has not put that one out yet. I know she was working on it. It's going to come out soon. But in the meantime, we're still going to give you a little snippet of what I'm talking about. So it's called Cut and Run. And you can go to her website, sarahmoonmusic.com, and go get it on all the streaming platforms. And I encourage you to certainly do that. I want to, I got to, you know me, I got to get the CD or the album and hold it in my hand. But I've got the album digitally, and oh my goodness, a lot to talk about. So let's play a little Cut and Run. Now you know what I'm talking about. All right, Sarah Moon, where are you, Sarah? Come on back. There she is. My goodness, Sarah. Holy smokes. I forgot to tell everybody one more thing. You got to crank it up. I mean, yeah. that thing, it just, I mean, I'm, I'm like, is this lover boy? What is this? And then your hey. vocals go bang. And I'm like, wow. So welcome, Sarah. A pleasure to meet you. Thanks for your time today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Patrick. And thanks for your kudos on the album. I, I appreciate you comparing me to such amazing uh, artists and, and vocalists, especially. But yeah, you know, the whole premise of this album was to crank it up. Let's let's make a rock album. Let's make it. It's a driving album, right? So you can get in your muscle car with the wind in your face, and the sunshine and and just on those open back roads and just crank it. And that that was the the whole idea. Well, you succeeded, I can tell you that. Um, I love the flow of the album. I mean, it is truly, and you know what I got out of a lot, and I'm 
I try to do a lot of homework on you, and I, I found Good Girl Sleep Alone, and I listened to all those tracks, and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, I love the flow of the album. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. You can get in the car, and you're not going to want to stop at any of the tracks because they all take you to a different level, and uh, that's what I certainly love. Now, reading the press release, Sarah, it says that you came from South Dakota before you moved to uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, so, and growing up, mom and dad, I guess, are very musically. I always start off to say, how did you find your love for music? Well, I got that answer reading the press release. But what was the music scene like growing up in South Dakota? Um, uh, since I've never been there, um, and I only know, like, Ron Keel um, from South Dakota. Um, what was it like uh, growing up with mom and dad? And, and what were they cranking up for you to uh, become, uh, have this successful career? Yeah, well, South Dakota, there's not a lot to do, right? So there is plenty of time to fine tune your craft. And if it's music, I mean, there's just stellar, stellar musicianship there. Um, and my parents owned a sound company. So growing up, we were touring with bands since the time I was two. And, and very versatile like you know we would do jazz and blues festivals we would do um rock we would do top 40 bands just we were all across the board musically and my parents are you know they love classic rock so i grew up listening to like you know led zeppelin the beatles um the doors janice you know Jimi hendrix and all those so um you know you can definitely hear that influence in in what i'm doing these days I hear that. But, you know, it, it says that one of your influences was, was the great Etta James. And, you know, I, who doesn't love blues and, and go back that far, that deep? Um, but, you know, I mentioned Good Girls Sleep Alone, which I found back in 2016. And to me, it was like you started really... I didn't hear that Ed Wilson, Atlantis more said. I heard more Terry Clark, a more mellow country, um, just relax. It wasn't like... <laughs> So what transformed from 2016 from that to Portland, Oregon, or where you're at today? Yeah, well, I'll take a step back. So my very first album is a blues album, and it's just a self-titled album, and you can come across it on all the streaming platforms and, and YouTube and whatnot as well. Um, so that one's heavy vocals. It's very rich sounding. And then um, I had a change in life where I was just ready to put out... Um, my own solo album and i played you know guitar on most of the songs too and so um i was just kind of feeling this roots rock americana thing at that time and then you know i was like all right well that was fun we got those songs off the table but let's rock so that that's what brought us to to the cut and run album no well, pretty much you know growth you know um you know we're going up in age and and more transition and finding different mediums of, of of checking out things and yeah no i i totally get it um where did you meet mr brandon cook and how did you intertwine with that crazy incredible he's a super guy i love him i love jeff um uh, incredible guitar player oh my goodness yeah brandon and i crossed paths i think it was nearly 20 years ago like probably 15 17 years ago um, I was hired to do some singing for a one-off kind of show that he was doing and we just kind of met through those people and then retained a friendship and then over the years we've just kind of been songwriting and, and playing guitar and singing together and um, it just was like all right you know he worked with me on Good Girl Sleep Alone and we wrote a song together mm -hmm. um, for that album and it was like let's do that again let's let's take some of these songs that we've been kind of stockpiling and write a few more and then just put out a rock album and so when you think rock <laughs> and you're me and you're in portland Oregon, and you're like well obviously you got to get brandon cook involved so that's that's how we ended up together and you know jeff and i actually just um did a duet together so i, I saw that that was, i'm gonna lead to that but i'll let you continue anyway yeah so it, that's that's basically how it kind of came to fruition it was like it's time to rock let's let's just let's put these songs out I dug and found this unexpected duet, and we're talking about my other friend, Jeff Buner of The Loyal Order. Yes. And if you please, I'm begging you to release Summer Girl. Oh, my goodness. You hold that note better than Miles Kennedy, I think, and I <laughs> have. And we're talking uh, the Mayfield Four, and uh, like as Sarah mentioned, you could go check it all out on 
her Instagram and YouTube and uh oh my goodness, I mean between you and Jeff, it was that was I'm like, where is this been? You gotta please tell me you gotta re-release it or send me the MP3 because I wanna play the crap out of it. That was greatly done. I will definitely send it to you. I I I have it and I am ready to release it, but um I'll be honest, I'm just trying to figure out because I don't own the rights to the song. Like the Mayfield Four knows that I that I did it, you know, right. some, and, and given their like appreciation and thumbs up. So that was that's an honor for me. But um yeah, I was I kept driving around in the car hearing that song. I just kept writing this harmony, the higher harmony part that, that you hear on the video, and I was like, Hey Jeff, you wanna do a duet with me? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I called unexpected duets where I'm I'm working with different musicians and most of them local, but some of them will be outside of Portland as well. So what inspire what inspires you to write music? Is it therapeutic going back to your debut album and good girls sleep alone from different relationships and life experiences? Um, does it start with a guitar? Does it start with a lyric? Do you have a book while you're driving or selling a house, somebody says, and you go, wait, I got to write this down. How does it all start for you? Well, voice memos for me. Um, usually I'll be in the car driving and I'll be, you know, singing along with something or I'll get a lyrical idea or I generally find myself in the car writing choruses. So I'll get out the phone and just do a quick voice memo and then I'll take it to Brandon and be like, hey, could you build some chords around this idea? And then vice versa. He'll come to me with... Uh, a topic or, um, you know, we both write somewhat from life experience, but also based on people around us, you know, so it's not all our own personal um, journey that we're writing about. But yeah, we just kind of, our, our motto, our, our kind of motto, I guess, is just to say yes. So we just say yes to each other's ideas and then we just kind of start compiling. So sometimes I'll just be free writing and I'll have a bunch of lyrics and then he'll be writing some chord progressions and we kind of come together and see if they fit. And if not, we just kind of keep fine tuning until they do. I love it. I don't know. The more I play these tracks, I mean, from Cut and Run, which is so high energy, and then into Dignity and Grace. And then, I mean, I fell in love with Golden Silence. And then you get into I Don't Know, which starts off somewhat like a ballad. And then it just takes off again, which is a great song. Excellent. Only You Stay... I mean, I I mean between the drums and I said to Brandon, oh my God, I got this deep purple vibe with the keyboards. I mean, they just fit in just so magically. Um and and knocking me down gave me a little bit more funk um addition to everything that you're doing. Um I said, man, I, I can play all these tracks. Um I, and I love them all. He gave me his favorites. Um, and I'll ask you what your favorites are. Not that they're all your babies, they're all your favorites, obviously. It's hard to choose just one. But if you could, which one would you which one would you select, Sarah? Oh man. Um I know it's a tough one, right? It's all your kids. Barn burners definitely get me, like knocking me down, only you stay. But as far as guitar solo work goes, um, just that that middle section guitar part for um for i don't know just it just like kills me in the best way possible it's he was emoting so much during that and yeah so yeah it's a tough choice because they all have different you know facets to them but i i'm pretty pleased with how the album turned out that's for sure oh my goodness yes absolutely now so i meant go, go ahead I'm so glad to hear that you like it. That you, that you yeah, it. no, I'm like, man, this has got, the world needs to hear this. And I was really happy to hear that you were working on putting out a video. We live in this YouTube world. Um, if not the world listening to me, if you put out a video, obviously it could go viral tomorrow. So that's why I encourage everybody to go to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And now, you, besides the realtor, I don't know when you got time to sell houses, and I know you're a mom. It's cool to see your son with a guitar in his hand. Doesn't surprise me if you're hanging out with Brandon. I'm sure he's an influence on Uncle Brandon coming over um, Brandon. with a good, with a guitar. Um, you also do this Barracuda. You know, I mentioned Nancy Wilson, and I don't think of it because of where you're living. Um, it's just that powerhouse. And here you are playing Nancy Wilson in this oh, yeah. tribute band playing yeah. Barracuda. So if your partner can't make it, you throw somebody else can wear the blonde wig because you can certainly do both. 
You even got the kick. I love the kick. Nancy's kick. Yeah, if you're going to go Nancy, you got to go big, right? You got to do it up. So that, that pretty much keeps your skill sets, I'm sure, up of, you know, playing hard, playing different. I saw a bad habit. Another side of uh, big net your project, I want to say that you're doing. So it just probably um, really helps you keep your mind open and thinking of things besides just, you know, saying, I want to do this. I want to do that. Yeah, for sure. You know, performance is kind of my number one. You know, I, I singing is my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite. And then, you know, guitar is, is a second, close second there. And so anytime I can perform is is a good day. Yeah, so is the game plan um, uh, released? Well, obviously, you released the album is like pushing the singles and a video every couple months to get people to. I mean, that seems to be the trend anymore, Sarah. It's like people, I mean, it's great to put the album out, but you know, here's Cut and Run, here's, you know, Golden Silence, and then put the video out. And people go, whoa, now they see you and see what's going on. Is that the game plan? And then maybe down the road to tour. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll play some, we are playing locally. Um, and, you know, I play with well, with all the bands, kind of the Pacific Northwest and then into Canada with Barracuda. Um, I'm the only American in that band. Everyone else is from BC. Um, yeah, and we start filming the video for Cut and Run, the track, the title track on Sunday. So that video will be in the works. And then, um, you know, it would be the dream to tour but it would have to be the right tour. And, you know, a lot of us have children and, you know, day job. They're in a van. They're working on stuff, logistics, right? Yeah. You know, we, we do share a few members in the Loyal Order and the Sarah Moon Band. Just yeah, Kyle, play. right? I want to say Kyle's on drums. Yeah, Kyle's on drums. And uh, he's not, he he was my studio drummer. So he's not performing with us. We have a different drummer named Ryan Moore, who's who's awesome. Like just a powerhouse as well. You, you got some big shoes to fill when you're playing Kyle's heavy, heavy hitting parts. And then um, we also share a guitarist named uh, Tim DeQuiletis. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a backup to the backup in, in, in these days anymore. So who would you like to open for? My dream is to open for the Foo Fighters. Oh, yeah, go big or go home. Come on, Dave. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, really, like any kind of national to international touring artists that you know that we would jive with. I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't, I can't get past that dream of the Foo Fighters. But you know, I mean, someone like Pink or Alanis, or you know, that those could be really, really fun tours. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen Alanis live, but the audience is singing louder than she is, man. They're into that stuff. So it's it's fun. I have not seen her live. And it really was eye-opening to realize Taylor Hawkins had his, um, you know, start through her. And I'm like, really? And then I went back to the, obviously, YouTube videos and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, who would yeah. ever thought, where did that come from? But um, pretty, pretty cool. Now, how do, maybe can... Can you open for like um, um, Barracuda, the heart group? I mean, double duty. Have you thought about that just to get the exposure? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, I, you know, I'm doing some kind of with different bands right now down here, but we've definitely been talking about even potentially going up to Canada and, and playing some shows together. But yeah, that might be in the future. So dude, are we working? I mean, artists like yourself just don't stop, even though we got album it's like a, I'm, they haven't listed as your debut album, but like you said, you have already had your self-titled album, and then Good Girls on Good Girls Sleep Alone. Do they really only Good Girls Sleep Alone? I meant to ask you that. Really, I've been here for thirty-five years. And I don't know what what the hell do I know? But that song that that um, title came from the song called Either Way, and you know, it's it's about the struggle of being a good girl and sleeping alone. Really. <laughs> You should have been a badass. Come on, Sarah. Either. I love it. No, no, it's all it's all good. In fact, I have a note here. I liked um Be Kind to of My Heart. Um, I like Perch. I like that mandolin type of uh, music. I'm always I started as a country guy. I mean, I've always was a classic rock guy, but when I got into the music world, it was really country uh music right when the line dancing started to come when I had dark black hair and wore a cowboy hat. And now, 35 years and I got a daughter. 
It's all over with, trust me. Um, <laughs> how is the real estate business in Portland, Oregon? Are you, uh, do you give them a, a CD and a business card? For a while, I kept everything really separate, you know. Um, just No, it- no, they got to know. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, my real estate business sponsors a stage at a music festival and like just trying to kind of commingle all of that. So people know, you know, oh, Nancy from Barracuda can also help sell my house. Nancy know? from Barracuda. <laughs> and Nancy is actually on tour and I see Anne's trying to go on tour. I wish they would just settle whatever and be hard again, but I, you know, whatever. I'm like, stuff. so what do you tell your son? I see him with a guitar. Um, does he have uh, inspiration to follow in mom's footsteps and grandparents' footsteps? He's little. We'll see what he wants to do, but lately he's all about the bass. So, oh, I was- nice! I bought him a really cool bass for his uh, his upcoming birthday, and it's like a small version with rubber strings, which I've never seen before, and it's really easy for him to play. So he was begging for it at the music store but you know if he becomes my bassist then you know all i need is a drummer and i'm all set so oh, i would prefer the bass compared to him banging on the drums yeah. all day going no, no. He, out the drums. he was a drummer first and then uh his grandpa made him a little you know it's like a frankenstein squire guitar so he's he's got no shortage of instruments watch he'll probably be a jock or something and i'll be like <laughs> oh, oh my goodness well i gotta say the album is the album, so is it, I did see it on all the streaming platforms. Is there a plan to put it out physically on a CD or an album? I know the whole vinyl and pressing is like a pain in the butt these days. Yeah, or vinyl's it's only going to be uh, digital. I have I have physical CDs. Um, I don't plan to do vinyl just because it's, it's so backed up and it's pretty expensive from my understanding. Um, but I do have physical CDs and I, I hear that you like those. So I'm, I'm happy to send you one. Uh, yeah, I got, I'm waiting for these guys when you see them characters. Like, oh, yeah. where's the next one? You're killing me, you know? But, I know Brandon said they're working on it. So between giving lessons and now he's working with you. Well, he has been working with you. And uh, working certainly with Jeff and Kyle and, and that band is uh, is totally awesome. So besides this, I don't know when you got time to bake and cook and play <laughs> mom. Happy belated Mother's Day. Uh, what other hobbies do you do? And maybe if you weren't doing the real, real estate world and the music world, what would you be doing? Oh, my gosh. That's the million dollar question. Um, you know, people often ask me what my hobbies are and I... <laughs> Music, music, I think, is my hobby. So it's my passion and my hobby. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a bookworm. I like exercise and do yoga and those types of things. But um, really, it's it's kind of music or nothing for me. So, how do you take care of that instrument, that beautiful instrument that you have that exploded on this album? Yeah, um, without damaging vocal cords and stuff like that. Oh, sure. Um, so I grew up singing in a, a international touring children's choir. So I am classically trained. And then I actually have a background in opera and jazz. I've even sung like Gregorian chant, like weird stuff over the course of my life. But um, I have a lot of training. So I trained for years on end. And so I, I you know, um, I just... At this point, it happens naturally, right? So when I do those high notes or those big, you know, trumpeting kind of sounds, um, it's very well supported. So it, it it keeps the voice healthy. That being said, I'm not touring and I'm not singing it every single night. Um, you know, that's always a different kind of ball of wax when you're touring because then you're in and out of air conditioning and you're not eating as well and taking care of yourself as well. But um but yeah, I mean, mostly, you know, all the good things that eat right and exercise and they get a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> lots of sleep, lots of this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I say it all the time. I, I've, I've met Mark Slaughter and Mark would tell me, I'm like, how do you hit these high notes for the last 40 years? But, and seeing him live and he would always just say, talking is harder on your vocal cords than singing. Um, he says, I try to, when I do the show, I say, hi, sign, take a picture, but I don't overdo myself when it comes to, you know, doing an interview after a show or before a show. Right. Um, well, and I about, can't. You do a lot of interviews. You're probably talking quite a bit. 
Yeah, no, I I find myself to I used to do one one or two a day, and I'm I want to do the right thing. I want to ask you questions that maybe nobody else asks. I want to dig and prepare, like you know, listening to all the tracks of Good Girls, uh, yeah, Good Girls Sleep Alone, um, and then you know, find out how you're doing a duet with Jeff. And I don't want to just ask this, you know, the basic who's your influence, what are you doing, you know, I. I get all that. My, to be honest with you, the hardest part of my job since I found this love for new music, I played all the hits forever. Yeah. And um, I said, you know, nobody plays new music. And I, I became friends with Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top. That's how I met Billy. We're really good friends. And he told me, you got to go to the blues, listen to the blues, you know. And um, I, I started playing his solo music. And uh, before you know it, I'm like, well, what about everybody else? And I have met everybody. If you look at my YouTube, it's crazy to hang out with Alice Cooper, Three Doors Down, Cheap Trick, Night Ranger, everybody. Because artists like yourself, that's what they do. They create new music and they they thank me. And I'm like, you lost your mind, but it, it's all good. I also do the dice game. So I got to either go to Portland, Oregon, or you got to come to New York. So I give you five dice and if we do it before or after the show, and if you roll three of a kind, um, uh, if you roll a f five dice, uh, what am I saying? Three rolls, five dice. I can't use that other word of that game, most I get sued. I use Pat Calamari's five for it all. You roll the five dice, and if you can get them all in one suit, um, in three totaling and three rolls, I play your entire album. And, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to do something more. I mean, I, I could play the album. But I'm like, no, I want to meet these. And it takes 30 seconds. And I was blessed to meet Paul Rogers, a bad company of Paul Rogers fame. Talk about velvet rock voice. And he had a 16-track live album. And he's like, yeah, come to my show in New York City. I'm rolling the dice. And he did. And he says, here, look over there. And he actually turned the dice. And he had all like five fours. He goes, now you got to play. <laughs> and it was so cool. And he was... Uh, so oh, Paul Rogers connection. So the rhythm section for Barracuda is the bassist has been in Bad Company since the '90s, and the drummer is Paul Rogers touring drummer. So there we go. There's our Bad Company connection. Wow. Ever Separation, right? I love that. I love that. Yeah. So uh, I'm a little crazy squid out of the water and trying to do what I can, and then I get like you know ten CDs a week from people begging me. So just listen. I mean, the hardest part of my job is I want to listen to every track. I want to close my eyes and I'm a lyric guy and envisioned interpretate what you're trying to say. And that's what's great about music. You know, cut and run could mean something totally different for me compared to what you what you what you meant to write with uh, Brandon too. So, um, but it's all good. It's, it's all kind good. Of really delved into what the songs mean. <laughs> From the writer's perspective because i want people to have that op opportunity to just like put the headphones on or put it in the car while they're driving and just and see what resonates with them and and you know maybe it's something that's going on in their life maybe they've had a past experience that the song reminds them of but that's the beauty of music like you said just crank it up and 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 see where it takes you now did you write all this with brandon during the whole COVID thing or did you have these on the shelf for a while a couple of them we had written prior but the bulk of it and all the demos were done during the pandemic, which was kind of hilarious. So we had really, really cold weather here and we were writing in three different places. So we had our producer and his studio and we'd be like in some cold isolation booth, you know, like <laughs> uh, working from essentially like a Zoom setup so that we could could converse. And then, uh, yeah, a lot of the demoing was done in three different locations. Um, but then we were, you know, fortunate enough to be able to all meet and actually record the band together in the studio. So we did that. That was during the 115 degree weather. So we did the like really cold weather to the really super hot weather. You're talking me out of not going to the Pacific Northwest. I can tell you that. <laughs> that here, but you know, it is now. Seattle, it rains, and now you're telling me 115 degree weather. I... It's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Yeah. So wait, what part of New York are you in? I'm in Poughkeepsie, about an hour and a half, if that, north of New York City. Hour okay. and a half south of Albany. I border Connecticut and northern New Jersey. So I cover a pretty good tri-state area. So if you're playing in the tri-state, 
I'm yeah. coming to see you. Have you been able to play some of the songs live yet? Yes, we've had a CD release party, and then we've had one, uh, like a supporting band show since then. So the the idea is just to play, you know, I mean, not overly often, but we'll we'll play as much as we can, and then you know maybe do a little, um, some flyout dates and some, you know, I don't know if we'll tour tour depends, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, you know, that's the hope. Oh, uh, you got it. Like, look, you got to make it happen, right? If you were going to give advice to somebody getting into the business, you know, what do we always say? Just go for it and do it. You're yeah. going to run into, I call them obstacles or hurdles. And I just leap over them. People say, oh, you're not going to do this. And I go, watch me do this. Yeah. And I did it. I did it. I mean, I'm like, you know, like I said, artists are thanking, national known artists are thanking me for playing their solo stuff. And I'm like, really? Is this really happening? But Awesome. Yeah, no dreams come true, and if you, you know, I tell my kids who are in their thirties, how bad do you want it? Find a job that you love. I don't want to hear oh, I had a crappy day at work today because well, then it's not a great job. Find something that you really love, then it's not work. Then it yeah. just you know you want to go back the next day. Easy for dad to say, but we've all we've all learned from. Like I said, failure is. I don't want to say fail. Failure um, is a good thing because we learn from it. You know, you're not going to do, hopefully you're not going to, you'll learn from it and not do it again. What haven't I asked wonderful Miss Sarah here about Sarah Moon? I don't know. What can, what would you like to share to the world on this incredible Zoom? <laughs> share with the world. Um, you know. Sign her by the CD. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Dave no, no, no. Bro, you better watch this. I better tag him. I'm gonna tag him. <laughs> no, I just I appreciate anybody who listens to the album. I mean, there's so much music out there nowadays that you know it, it can be difficult to get it out there. So anybody who who listens and and likes it and lets me know that just that that speaks volumes. So and go to your website, sarahmoonmusic.com moonmusic.com that's right and i know you're on instagram and i want to and thank you for taking me on facebook yes i mean all this 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 crazy world we live in anymore sarah i know we're all so connected there you go well i hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as i have congratulations on this um very well produced very well written um, I loved every track and I encourage everybody to go and get it and support this amazing artist today and send my best to those characters in this band. I will. He was so excited. Can I be on the Zoom with you? Of course yeah. you can. I was like, you got to join us. He's like, you're going to love Pat. They call him Squid. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Every time he talks to me, it's Squid, Squid, Squid. But <laughs> check her out, Sarah Moon, Cut and Run. Go get it today. Fantastic. Thank you.